Republicans reverse course on nominating a Supreme Court justice. And it's not hypocrisy. Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle America. Well, it's your boy Vin in the house. And I'm D.L. Beluga. And uh, <laughs> we're going to let you into a little family debate. Uh, <laughs> DL is of the opinion that the the clear and naked hypocrisy of the Republicans wow. is uh, somehow excusable or not hypocritical in the you're saying wow yeah I'm I'm shocked to say it's it's very nuanced it's not some simple black and white situation you say oh it's blatant hypocrisy. Okay. Just take a random person off the street and bring in the situation. They can a make random food. person on the street. Is Mitch McConnell a, a random person no, on the street? No, no, no. Okay, so America, I'm about to show you a video. We're about to show you a video. And uh, this is Mitch McConnell in 2016. And remember, uh, Justice Antonin Scalia had just, had just passed away. God bless the dead. And Mr. Obama uh, elected someone. And so this was Mr. McConnell's reasoning for why... Um, the Senate was going to block that nomination. Here we go. And one of the most important issues now is this. Who will Americans trust to nominate the next Supreme Court justice? One might say this is an almost unprecedented moment in the history of our country. As senators, it leaves us with a choice. Will we allow the people to continue deciding who will nominate the next justice? Or will we empower a lame duck president to make that decision on his way out the door? instead. Roadshow. Whatever he decides, his own vice president and others remind us of an essential point. Presidents have a right to nominate just as the Senate has its constitutional right to provide or withhold. In this case, the Senate will withhold it. The Senate will appropriately revisit the matter after the American people finish making in November the decision they've already started making today. Okay, so if I'm interpreting Mr. McConnell correctly, he's saying that it would be inappropriate for Mr. Obama mm -hmm. to uh, elect a Supreme Court justice in an election year, let the American people decide the president first, mm -hmm. and then after that, we will make our decision. That's literally what he said. And now, what I want you to do is, I want you to, now you're going to read the, this is Time Mag, this is Time Magazine or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, so that's what he said in 2016 when Obama was electing someone to replace the recently deceased Antonin Scalia. And then here's yours. Go ahead. Okay. This is this is what Mitch McConnell is saying now. In the last midterm election before Justice Scalia's death in 2016, Americans elected a Republican Senate majority. It's very important. Because we pledge to check a and balance the last days of a lame duck's president's second term. Also very important. We kept our promise. And since eighteen since the eighteen eighties, no Senate has confirmed an opposite party's president Supreme Court nominee in the presidential election year. By contracts, Americans reelected reelected our majority in 2016 and expanded it in 2018 because we pledged to work with President Trump and support his agenda particularly his outstanding appointments to the federal judiciary. Once again, we will keep our promise. President Trump's nominee will receive a vote on the floor of the United States Senate. That's what Mitch McConnell said. Uh, the same In a day. statement, the same day that Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. Yep. In 1988, a presidential election year, a Democratic Senate confirmed Justice Anthony Kennedy, a Republican president, Ronald Reagan's nominee, to fill a 1987 vacancy. So... Your man Mitch McConnell wasn't being completely truthful. He said since 1880s, no Senate had confirmed an opposite party president's Supreme Court nominee. In 1988, a presidential election year, a Democratic Senate confirmed Justice Anthony Kennedy, a Republican uh, that President Ronald Reagan, Republican President Ro Ronald Reagan's nominee to fill a 1987 vacancy. So Mitch McConnell is wrong. That happened as recently as 1988. So, uh, but aside from that little fact, you're saying, you're saying that this is a qualitatively different scenario whereby we could not levy a charge of hypocrisy among the Republicans. That's your argument. Yeah. 
And why why is that? Well, how is that not hypocrisy? Because uh, President Trump still has another term. Right? He, he has he another term. Pers perspective other term. He may not have another yes, term. It's, Things it's aren't looking very well for him it's right It's perspective. Now. It's not like it's, it's in his second term. And Your man Trump was begging uh, suburban white women, basically, to vote for him again. When? Yeah, a couple days ago. He said, please like me or something like that. What? Like, you, you're assuming, you think that Trump has the nomination in the bag? Yeah. I mean, come on, Biden. I don't think... Okay. All right. And so, this is a uh, uh, Senate that is controlled by Republicans, right? And so I think it's very inappropriate that Obama, with his Democrat self, thinks that he can nominate another Democrat in the election year before he's about to get cast out the door. And he wasn't going to get cast out the door because it was his last year. It was his eighth year. And so uh, this is a completely different situation. I don't understand how it's a completely different situation. Okay, it's not complete. It's, it's a basically different situation. All I'm getting from you is... Uh, well, we have the power in the Senate to stop it in 2016, mm -hmm. and the Democrats don't have the power to stop us now. No, 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 like the American people have spoken, and we, they, they want a Senate majority of Republicans. Well, and so, could, could Obama make the argument that the American people had spoken, and so that's the reason why he was in his eighth year of the presidency? Couldn't he make yes, that Yes, but, I mean, we, the Senate still has to check and balance the president, which is what he, what he said, and so... Uh, it's also, I mean, I don't really think this matters because this should, this should have never, just because Mitch McConnell messed up the fact doesn't mean that, um, that, uh, that the Democratic Senate had any business, uh, opposing, uh, Ronald Reagan. Where, where is, uh, where is this in the Constitution that the Senate, that the President always has to represent or, or bring forth the same, uh, party for the Supreme Court Justice as what's in the Senate? Where is that in the Constitution? What no, article in the Constitution? I'm just saying, like, it's... Mitch McConnell had every right to deny Obama's uh, well, nominee. Nobody's saying he didn't have the right to do and it. And he also has every moral and ethical and constitutional right to go through with Amy Coney Barrett's okay. nomination. The question is not whether he has a right to do so. The question no, is... he's is, able to do it without... The, the question is is whether or not the, the charge of hypocrisy could be rightly applied to the Republicans in this situation. That's why I said he morally has the right to do it. So, so you don't see any hypocrisy in here at all? No. I feel like... You if, see no hypocrisy. No, if Mitch McConnell was like a regular old senator, and it was a Democratic Senate, and he was trying to get his, his little guy in, then perhaps... His he, little guy? What are you talking the about? The guy. I don't know his name. But the guy with the gray hair. I don't really know. It <laughs> didn't really matter, because he's, he's not he's a justice. So... That guy, if he would have got, if he would have nominated him and in and, and Mr. this regular old senator, and it was a as a Democratic Senate, right? Then that would be fine, even though even though his, his last term, his last year, and his last term, that's fine. So you're saying what he said and in 2016 is consistent with today? Is consistent with what he did today? With with what yes. you just read? Yes. So in 2016, he's saying. We need to wait for the American people to decide which president they want to elect, and then we will look at the Supreme Court nominee. I don't think he should have said that. Well, that's what he said. I'm not asking what you thought <laughs> yeah. he should say. Well, that, okay, so if we went with just what he said yeah. in the clip that we just provided, and when you compare it to now, could you concur that this is obvious hypocrisy? If the Senate was a Democratic majority. No, 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 no. If you, what does the fact that there is a Republican majority in the Senate have to do with the argument that he made here? The argument he made here was that you got a president that's going out, and let's wait for the American people to decide what the leader, who the leader is, and then we'll then we'll consider who uh, who to confirm for the Supreme Court. That's literally the argument that the Democrats are making now. The only variable between in between these two is that um, the first president was a Democrat, and they blocked him, and the second president is a Republican, and they're going forward with it. They announced that the day RBG died, or Biden wasn't even called yet. Poor form, by the way. I mean, I was not called yet. I mean, she died, and he released that letter the day that she died. That's a little cold, don't you think? 
It says, McConnell said in a statement the same day Ginsburg died. So as soon as she died, he goes and releases a statement that's like, yo, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna nominate a person right now. I personally, when I broke the RBG thing, I was like, there's no way the Republicans are going to try to push something through like that. It was like less than a month to the, to the election. We're like 19 days to the election. And, and you don't see any hypocrisy at all here. Okay, you know what? No, 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 I, no, I'm not, I don't, I really, I don't think so, I think the heat, that this is very consistent, and if, and if Obama, if, again, if Mitch McConnell is a regular old senator, he would have been like, yeah, I think Obama's well within his rights to do it, let's go forward with it, blah, 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 but seeing as how the American people have spoken twice, in 2016 until in 18, and in 20, uh, and in, I, I, this is, well, this is 2016, but, when I say 2016, people are going to think of the presidential elections, but 2016 as in the Senate 2016, elections um we have we want we as an americans want a senate majority of republicans and so we i, I mean this is I, I think it's very inappropriate for obama to use hi, uh him and his democratic self to push for this whatever his name was i don't i don't know his name i probably should get his name so you feel it's appropriate for trump with his republican self to push forward a far right uh uh, Republican Supreme Court justice because there is a Republican majority in the Senate. Yes. So the American people are kind of paralleled right now. Okay. That's th so your your argument boils down to hey, we have the power in the Senate. No. No. No, no, no. no. Okay, no, if there was no Senate majority leader, this would still be a, uh, this would still be I, how, how should I put this? If there was no Senate majority leader and they just had like a floor vote or whatever, uh, just automatically, like, compulsory. Um, I think that if Ob Obama would have, would, should not even bring up a nomination until, until, well, never, because he does his last, that was, that was, that was his last year in, the, in his last term. So he should never bring up a nomination if it was compulsory for there to be a floor vote. But Trump has every right, uh, two weeks before the election, because one he day. Because Senate majority. Sure, I mean, not one day, but you see what I'm saying. Because the American people have spoken, we're on a parallel. Hey, look, this this is what happens, Democrats, when, uh, weren't we supposed to have a, a, a blue wave during the midterms? Wasn't that the big thing with Jenk and all the rest of them? Them people over there at TYT, they're all chuckling and stuff. By the way, there's a funny Dame Pesos video about that. But, but. Do you like the Young Turks? Uh, who? TYT is that you? Yeah, TYT. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, 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 there was supposed to be this giant blue wave and, you know, whatever. And, you know, they got the House, but the, the Senate actually expanded in 2018 for the Republicans. And now here, this is one of the consequences now of. A Republican Senate, because now, you know, as, as DL is saying, well, hey, it is what it is. Um, look, I don't really, here's what this all comes down to. What it comes down to is that Amy Comey Barrett is far right. She's very religious. She's got public statements about the kingdom of God and all the rest of it. He does. Uh, yeah. And um, she's, she's not very friendly to the cause of abortion. And uh, now the the balance of power in the Supreme Court is going to be, uh, you know, supposedly, theoretically, pro-life. So you mentioned something about Kavanaugh not being pro-life. Yeah, Kavanaugh is, Kavanaugh is, not, is, is not as pro-life as the alarmists. Uh, you know, Sam Sater was like, this is the end of Roe v. Wade, yada, yada, yada. Um, Kavanaugh is not as, as, as pro-life as people think that he is. Um, in the in December 2018, he sided with uh, the liberal judges on a Planned Parenthood case. It was like one of his first cases. He he sided with liberal judges on Planned Parenthood. What? So uh, here here's something that Republicans have to understand. I keep telling you guys this. You know, like, Republicans. Are, I just saw a post earlier today. It's like, oh, if you if you vote for Joe Biden, then you're not pro life. Uh, I'm sorry, but it was a Republican majority Supreme Court that gave us Roe v. Wade. Those are facts. Those are facts. It's a Republican majority that gave us Roe v. Wade. And now you've got Kavanaugh. Um, and then, you know, Trump, your man Trump himself said it in the debate that he had where he said that Roe v. Wade wasn't on the ballot. He's so, on the ballot. yeah, he's, what he's saying is there's no implications to Roe v. Wade if you elect me. That's what he was saying. What? So, you, my dear friend, are the prototypical oh uh, right leaning person who's been duped by the Republican Party into thinking 
that these people are really going to prioritize uh, abortion. I believe we're going to defeat abortion, but we're going to defeat abortion on the state level. Um, Buck v. Bell is still is still active. Like, it hasn't been rescinded, and yet we don't have, to our knowledge, um, uh, states that are co-signing forced sterilization of people, even though Buck v. Bell uh, clearly allows for it. So, we don't need the Supreme Court. But, but Republicans have crafted this entire narrative around um, Roe v. Wade and abortion or whatever, and they have styled themselves as the party that's against abortion when... What have they actually done at the federal level? Do you think Amy Cabrera's going to do something? Well, Amy Cob I mean, look, the only thing that she can do is uh, deal with case law and interpret the Constitution. So she, the judges can't actively do anything. The, the case has to get to their... Um, Are you doing something? Get to the desk. Huh? Are you doing something? Are you supposed to go to the, Are you supposed to go to the Supreme Court something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a separate, that's a separate topic. Well, so, I mean, if it becomes relevant and she is assigning that case, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I assume how she would vote if we ever get to the Supreme Court with that particular situation. But, um, you know, that is something that it's a very long shot, even with a major, uh, majority Republican Supreme Court. Because if the Republicans actually struck down Roe v. Wade, then they would have, what would they have to run on? How would they get evangelical Christians to vote for them? Uh, because gays, the, the, gays. the boogeyman of abortion. What do you mean, gays? Like, what have the gays done to anyone? No, evangelicals are. They're supposedly homophobic. So, Suppos evangelicals aren't homophobic. No, they're not. Wait, are you homophobic? No, but am okay. I? Am I your typical evangelical? No. If you walk into a church, you're saying you're walking to a bunch of homophobes. That's a completely separate topic. Oh my god! Let's just stay on topic. Well, you, I you, thought that was on topic. I thought that that would be something to appeal to. I mean, God, the whole LGBT, transgender people I and mean, all that stuff, especially transgender people. So you're saying you're saying the Republicans would still be able to use gay people as a boogeyman to influence uh, the evangelical vote? Well, I mean, vote. Hillary Clinton's a great boogeyman. AOC's a great boogeyman. Or woman, sorry, gender neutral pronouns. <laughs> AOC, AOC. Uh, yeah, Hillary, I don't think is is is. Yeah, I mean Hillary is done. She's too embarrassed to run again. Yeah, uh, she's not allowed to run again. I don't think I don't think the I don't think Obama would. Obama is is the is is the uh, high high priest of of uh, <laughs> the party. So Obama directs everybody and tells everybody what to do and where to vote and all the rest of it. I don't know. I, I mean this this is to me this is obvious and clear hypocrisy. DL. He said it in 2016. And you know what's funny before. What? Before we went live, DL was looking for a quote from uh, Lindsey Graham, so um, I'm going to quote Lindsey Graham because, um, you know, what was, uh, what was the term that he used? Hey, use, my he, use my words against me. This is March 3rd, 2016. This is March 3rd, 2016. This is Lindsey Graham, and here we go. So here's the Twitter. In light of these two events, I will support President Donald Trump in any effort to move forward regarding the recent vacancy created by the passing of Justice Ginsburg. You ready for this? Here's what he said in 2016. Works against me. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, whoever it might be, make that nomination and you could use my words against me and you'd be absolutely right now i'll tell you this this may make you feel better but i really don't care if an opening comes in the last year of president trump's term and the primary process has started we'll wait till the next election wait and i've got a good chance of being the judiciary. you're on the record mind, yeah forget. all right mind, hold the tape Never mind. Tree I said that. Uh, uh, the primary process. I, I remember the primaries. The primary process is finished. I was there. Okay, yeah. I, that I means there. that was. The <laughs> oh my! We, 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 we are more. <laughs> we are more uh, advanced than the actual primary process even starting. The primary process is over, Mr. Graham. So based on your own words, you're a damn hypocrite. Is he a hypocrite? Can we agree? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Republicans... I don't think that Lindsey Graham and Trump agree on that. Well, obviously...
obviously Trump doesn't no. agree with it. No, 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 no. I don't think Lindsey. <laughs> I don't think 2016 Trump agrees with 2016 Lindsey Graham. It, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah, all Lindsay, these, all these people. Lindsey Graham is individual hypocritical. All Republican these Republican Party is not is not hypocritical. All this guy is just the Republic, um, Look, both the Republicans and the Democrats are hypocrites well, in this, in this mean, situation. Yeah, it's, it's because so funny because they're like. He, he, here's the thing that kills me about both of these groups: the clearly the Democrats are 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 clearly hypocritical in this situation because they were saying that. Um, you know, RBG was, they were saying that that Obama should have been able to nominate a Supreme Court justice even in his last year. RBG said, you know, it's four years, not three years, yada, yada. So Democrats are completely hypocritical in this regard. So are Republicans. I wish people would just, come, one of them would just come out and say, look, this is about Roe v. Wade. This is about a lifetime appointment. This is about having somebody in power who is against one of these uh, central... Uh, stalwart topics of that defines both of our parties supposedly, and um, this is what we want to happen, and this is not we like. I wish that would be the case. Instead, they're doing all this fluff, and then they put beautiful people like you in a situation now where you got to look like a damn fool in front of millions of people trying to justify something that is clearly hypocritical. Why don't you just just say, look, the Republicans have the power now, and so we're going to strong arm the situation. It is what it is. You should have won in 2018. I will say, though, I will say that the argument is, look, we have the majority because the people voted in a majority because they wanted us to check and balance Obama in 2016. And the, the fact that we have a majority in the Senate now when we have Trump in office means that the American people want us to co-sign whatever Trump says. Yeah. That's a solid argument. And I'm sorry, Democrats, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, things might have been a little bit different if you'd have actually allowed the democratic process to actually happen in the 2016 primaries where Bernie Sanders was clear, uh, clearly going to win. Now, I don't know what would have happened in 2018 if Bernie Sanders would have won. I think things would have been very blue. I think, well, I don't know. I think things would have actually got bloody red, actually. Really? Yeah, because I think all the... All the fear about so sh socialism and all this other stuff would have activated a Republican base to vote like crazy to, to check and balance him. Because, think about it, even uh, centrist or right-leaning Democrats hate uh, Bernie. Yeah. I mean, Chris Matthews got turned, basically, because he was going to war with Bernie every single day. Chris Matthews? Yeah. That's, yeah. He, no, 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 no. Uh, the uh, newscaster. Hardball is it? Oh. He's the MSNBC guy, oh. and he just he just lost his mind. He compared Bernie to Hitler and all this stuff. Like <laughs> Bernie's Jewish, wow. he compared him to Hitler, oh, and man. and so like like I think you would have the the in 2018 it would have got very bloody because you would have had Republicans activated and you would have had centrist in front. I mean, you had Michael Bloomberg, a billionaire. He's up there going, yeah. what are you talking about? This is America. We don't do, we don't do socialism. We're <laughs> right. capitalists. Remember so that. I think you would have had a massive, you would have, you would, you would have had a, a, a Senate glutted with, they would have had a super mega majority. Uh, I think if Bernie would have won. Oh, wow. So, um, but I think if Bernie would have won, that RBG would have probably stepped down. What? I really? do believe that. I thought that's it for life. Yeah, it's a lifetime appointment, which means they don't have to run every four years, oh, but they can step down. They step down. They want to. Right? So people were saying, look, you're not very healthy, you're a septuagenarian, step down. She wanted to wait because she wanted to be a Supreme Court justice while Hillary, the first American female president. Oh, was so not, she wanted to have this girl power thing. Yeah, it was all, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh so gosh. she assumed a Hillary victory, oh, and then Hillary, well, Hillary, correct. So I think if Bernie would have won, she would have stepped down. Oh. Because the, the prospects of Hillary becoming president after Bernie gets nominated would have been nil. Yeah. But she stayed on because she wanted the, you know, the big, nice little metaphorical moment. <laughs> right? Um... Oh goodness! And so, so there you go. There's identity pockets, pro, uh, politics, politics gone to seed. But uh, here we are. So that's what happens when we play games. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in the election. We are going the to presidential keep you, election. Yeah, we're going to keep you posted. Uh, well, your your man Biden finally repudiated the uh, crime bill. The crime bill finally. 
After really? his like fifteenth time to repudiate, he finally repudiated. Obviously, in my mind, it's way too little, too late. But we'll see. He's uh, never publicly repudiated. No, this is the first time. Wow. Yeah, he defended it to the T about a couple months ago. Forty. This has been like forty years, right? Yeah. Thirty well, years. Well, so it's been thirty about years. About thirty years. Nineteen early nineties. Yeah. All right. Anyway, love your neighbor. Wasn't there a video you're gonna show us? No, oh, I I've seen enough. You've seen love it. your neighbor. Am I supposed to say something? You're supposed to say take care of each other. I oh, middle America. It's okay. Uh, take love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. We are the media. Okay. 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 All right. Well, there you go. Love your neighbor. Okay. Take care, well, take care of each other. There you go. Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. Till next time, guys.